wants to try to knock her down a couple of pegs. He wants her to feel like, I'm no 10. Yeah, but he's never even gotten a 10. Who never had looks and they finally get some money. They, they want the pretty women to suffer. My daughter looks like both. Scream and pick the best option and rock out. I noticed a woman had a hand down her pants and I remember thinking, gross. So dad was acting super nonchalant and basically was trying to kiki with the cops. When do you settle? When do you compromise? As for me, I've been single a pretty long time. Hey guys, welcome back to More to Life. Before I get into this video, I ask that you like, comment, subscribe. Also, smash that notification bell just to be sure you're good on my videos as soon as I release them. Let's get right into this. I've said it before and I'll say it again. When you are out of a man's league, he will do everything that he can to humble you. My mutual sent me this and I think it's the perfect example of just that. He always tells me that the reason he fell in love with me is because he's like, you're an eight and a half at everything. He's like, you're not a 10 in looks. You're not a 10 as an athlete. You're not a 10 in brains. He's like, but you are a solid eight and a half at everything you do. And to me, this is a red pill tactic that a lot of men learn from Kevin Samuels. How was that a red pill tactic? Of course, in his eyes, she's beautiful, but he's being honest. He's giving her a great grade. She's not an eight and a half. <laughs> and in looks, maybe in her other thing, she's eight and a half. But looks, no. And he probably says she's eight and a half in looks too. Samuels. When ladies would call into his podcast, he would ask them to rate themselves from one to ten, but they couldn't choose seven. And no matter what number they chose, he would always say that it was too high. This is how men try to humble you. They want you to know that they could do better. They want you to know somebody is prettier. Somebody. And you see how she lied? It was some girls that came on and said they were lower. Not very much, but a very few. And he admitted they were beautiful. Somebody is smarter, somebody is freakier, somebody who cooks better, cleans better. They want you to feel like no matter how amazing you are, that somebody's better than you. Oh, absolutely. He wants to try to knock her down a couple of pegs. He wants her to feel like, I'm no 10. Yeah, but he's never even gotten a 10. You being an eight and a half is still better than anything that he could ever get. And the only reason why you're entertaining him is because he has money. The kind of men who never had money, who never had looks, and they finally get some money... They, they want the pretty women to suffer. Huh? They want the pretty women who would have never given them a chance if they didn't have the money to suffer. They resent you. They feel like if I didn't have the money, she wouldn't even be here. They're mad at you for choosing them because they know in their heart the real reason why you did. Making a big deal out of nothing. Like always. Never stops. Let me go on to the next one. Your natural body shape or your surgery body shape will change the... People who were offended by that video, I promise you those type of people don't understand how the world works and don't understand that some things just is. Even if it hurts your feelings, it's the truth. A relationship reminds you how important it is to have that one true person who will bring out the good in you and see the best in you. And as a dark-skinned black woman, I know this is the truth. This woman... Look at this woman here, right? Now think about the man she would marry. It would be a lot different from the man she would marry. Of this course. is a fact. This is a fact. If she was to ever get married, imagine what her man would look like, right? It wouldn't be the same man as her. And this is what I feel like a lot of you guys don't understand. Different women attract different men and different men attract different women. Whether that hurts your feelings or not, it just is what it is. This woman would absolutely attract a different man than this woman. That's a fact. That is a fact. All of these women will not attract the same man on average. Yes, there are outliers because nothing in this world is absolute. But on average, these women will not have the same men chasing after them. Point blank, period. Now, I literally Googled 15 billionaires' wives, right? Middle-aged white men. And this is what their partners typically looked like. Blonde, 
or black or brown hair, thin and not overly curvaceous. Almost all, it was one who had a heavy set one. So understand, out of 15 billionaires, 14 out of 50, and she wasn't even heavy set, she just was a little bit heavier than her. So the people who are getting up- You know what she's not understanding? What she, the point she's missing, that she's not even explaining? Billionaires want women that were like their mothers. Even those women, that you showed, Sexy Red and the other two, they weren't like my mother. Guys don't want them. And also, what she forgot to mention is those women want the hood book of dudes. They don't want regular guys. They want the guys that are usually up to no good. Or they want the guy six feet making 100000 So, of course, I wouldn't go for that white girl, but I would go for another girl. Maybe that, that black girl in the tights I would go for. See, the point she's she's missing She's trying to address, you know, what they can get. And I don't really understand her point, but let's let's wheel it back in. These women are not fit for billionaires, even black billionaires. How about you address that? Let me get on to the next one. I'm fried, yes, fried. I'm fried. How many times have I came on here and told y'all, get a DNA test? Let me guess. It's a joke, right? It's a joke. All jokes got a little bit of truth in them. I'm not lying to you. I if she do some joke like this, go get you a test. And then look at the comments. Look at the comments. My daughter looks like both. Screaming, pick the best option and rock out. You out of your cotton picking mind if you want me to believe that every woman in that comment section was just playing. They all just lying. But these are the same people that if you ask some of them for a DNA test, they'll break up with you because Oh, that means you don't trust me? Oh, so what you think I'm out here messing around? Yes, I do. If you ever ask her for a DNA test and she tries to flip it on you like, oh, we can get this, but then we're gonna be done after because that means that you don't trust me. Get you that test. Because anybody who knows for a fact that that child is yours, they not, bro, they shouldn't give you no problems. It's wild, but he's right. I second that. Definitely get a test. You with a woman, look, how the kid looks, when it's first born, it may look like you, but not exactly like you. Like when my son was born, he looked exactly like me. I knew for sure. There was, he looked exactly like my baby pictures. That was a lot different. But for the most part, most men need to get the DNA test because women pit babies on the one who's more successful and keep their side dude and keep messing with him. It may even have another baby with him. That happens to guys. I see it all the time. A guy will get a test and then figure out he was the second option his whole relationship of five years or his whole marriage, definitely get a test. Because a lot of women are pulling this. A lot of women are pinning babies on guys. Those comments, which you see in the comments, were real. Tons of women are doing it. It's sad, but it's happening. Stay safe out there. Put a finger down if you had to call security on a woman who was publicly masturbating in the airport this morning. It's been a few hours and I've decompressed, so let's get into this story time. I had a 5 a.m. flight today, and when I was walking from getting a water back to the gate, I noticed a woman had a hand down her pants, and I remember thinking, gross, you know, what an inappropriate way to scratch yourself in public. As I got closer, I realized she was not scratching. She was rubbing her genitals in the open. I'm absolutely dumbfounded. I look around, you know, looking for validation from other people because I'm, I know I'm not crazy. I'm like, this woman is masturbating. Two Pakistani or Indian men look at me and kind of give me that like, yeah, we see that too. And I'm just sick. I decide to sit down, first mistake. But while I was sitting, I couldn't shake the fact that I just saw that in public. So I keep looking over at her and she's just acting weird. And at this point, she rolls out of her chair, lifts up her shirt and starts playing with her breasts. I also forgot to mention, she was sniffing her fingers after she would come out from her pants. The gate people had absolutely no idea what I was talking about. Granted, she was kind of far away. They're working on the computers, but I was like, it's disgusting. And I'm not getting on a plane with that. Like that's, mm -mm. so blah, 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 the cops come over. People start coming up to me, telling me how they saw her earlier. And I'm like, so we're just not, we're not gonna say anything. We're just gonna let somebody rub themselves in public now. 
anyway i was completely traumatized and literally sick for a couple hours i've never seen anything like that especially in public and um yeah best of luck to that woman and her family who came and got her moments later yeah guys so she said that this is part two of the story part two after her dad came so dad was acting super nonchalant and basically was trying to kiki with the cops and explain the situation hold up who's that it looks like a stripper in the back what is she wearing it looks like she's about to go to i don't know i'm not gonna judge let, let me let her continue situation away he was acting like this was just a regular old day I don't know how she managed to escape her family and get over to my section. And the fact that the dad was acting like this was just every day, this clearly is a issue, a longstanding issue. So my plane started boarding and I was just glad that she was not on my flight. So by the time I boarded, was walking through the little gate, the cops were still there, her father was there and they were just talking. I think they were just trying to explain the situation away. Um, so I don't know if she got on the no-fly list. I don't know if she got in trouble. I don't know what happened. I'm just glad I didn't have to sit next to that for three hours. Now, just the thing, that happens a lot in New York and some other places. But in New York, people probably would have minded their business. I see someone doing it at the airport. I'm not going to go and question people. I'm going to let it be. Sometimes you just have to let things go and let things ride, right? Now, of course, that girl probably has mental issues. That's what he was explaining away to the cops. But really, I don't see no big deal. I don't see why she stressed it. I would have left it alone and went about my business. But you already know, the nosiness of a modern woman can't help it. That lit up her day. She has something to talk about. She was a very happy camper after that. Gossip, gossip, gossip. She lived for it. And you, guess who wants to hear? Everyone on TikTok. But the question is, when do you settle? When do you compromise? Or do you at all? As for me, I've been single a pretty long time. Something that explains why. Never thought it would be this long. I have to admit, when I got divorced a long time ago, it was a little arrogant. I was in my... Um, mid thirties. And I knew it was a good catch. Good woman, educated, great career, amazing mom. Uh, and I was a great wife, cook, clean, do all that. So I kind of was a little arrogant and thought, oh, it's no problem. I'm going to be married in two to three years. Well, it's been a long, long time. And honestly, not even gotten close. And so sometimes you know, like a lot of women in my situation that I've talked to, that you ask yourself, well, when do you give up? She's lying. You can tell from her face she's 60. She got divorced, 30. She said, I look good. She put the freaking dress on, ding, ding. Every woman's got one, ding, ding. She was dancing in the club. Get with all the guys. She's still young, right? Get with all the guys. Running them up like a dude. These women are like guys nowadays. But they like to get on social media and lie. And then, and then turn around and not even just lie. Say, I need a six-figure guy. Why they letting all the Chads and Tyrones and all the Pookies and Rays and every guy in the club. And that's how they live their life. When do you give up on finding the one? Or do you? Uh, as for me, I go back and forth. Sometimes I go, well... I just need to be with Mr. Right now. Um, doesn't give me butterflies, but he's a good man. He's nice. He likes me. Um, don't have much in common, but he calls. So I talk to him. Um, or sometimes you've got the one that gives you butterflies, but you know he's unreliable and not dependable. He's broke. Uh, you got to take him out to dinner. We've all done that. Those are never sustaining long-term relationships. Exactly like I said. <laughs> so the question is, do you compromise? Well, where I am right now today, I'm going to say no. I'm not going to compromise. I'm waiting. I'm going to stay optimistic. It gets hard staying optimistic this long. But I'm going to stay optimistic. Man, lady, it's... And she's still surviving off that makeup. It's it's peeling up that those wrinkles because you know she take that off, the face just drops. <sighs> Boo! But man, woman hit the wall and still don't see it, and it's bad. And guys don't want to deal with that because guys already realize it's definitely more to life 
Then it was something like that. So he's coming.